today we're going to have a look at the Leatherman Charge. I thought that would be fun. I've done an unboxing and first impressions of this a while ago. Uh, I've been using it quite a bit. I've actually been, this has been in my backpack for uh, a while because it's a nice robust tool but it's not, not too heavy. My absolute number one tool is the Leatherman Surge but if you want something that's a bit more pocketable the charge is very nice. And this is not just any charge, this is the Charge TTI. It has titanium grip scales. Very nice tool. And mine came with, with the pouch. This is a little flashlight, didn't come with that. Uh, it's a nice leather pouch and then it came with uh, no less than seven of the uh, Leatherman bits. You can buy the bit kit but um, you get these which, which have some nice flat heads, see some Torx, extra Phillips and a few um, hex. So you have a pretty decent selection here. Okay let's look at the tool. Now I'm going to quickly cover the parts of the tool. I've already done that during the unboxing but I'm, I'm going to go you know, over it all quickly and then the more interesting thing is testing all these functions. Right? So that's what we're going to do. Um, first of all you have this nice uh, clip. It's a nice pocket clip allows you to carry the tool very deeply in your pocket and it is removable. It also comes with an extra little eye, just a loop eye. It was pointed out to me by uh, one of my kind viewers that uh, people in the industry use that to put a, a wrist strap on. So you have the eye here, wrist strap on. You only carry it around your neck, it's too heavy. But if you drop it, you can drop it, it will just stay there. Same thing divers do, I suppose. Uh, and if you're at great height and it drops, you won't kill someone or destroy a tool. Of course, the first would be worse than the latter. Um, what else we got on here? Well, on the outside, a couple of nifty tools. There is the knife. Uh, the knife blade is uh, is definitely a decent size. I think it's just a little bit bigger than that on a, a, a larger Vitorinox knife. And I'm just pulling this out. So here we have the uh, surge and then you have the charge. So it's, it's a little bit smaller than that. But, unlike on the uh, surge, the charge actually has S30V steel. The uh, Rolls Royce of uh, knife steels. People really like it and it's, it's a very nice, very hard steel. Um, so definitely very cool and out of the box razor, razor sharp. Flip it around and then you have a serrated edge knife with a hook. Uh, you can call it a gutting hook or you can call it a seat belt cutter depending on what exactly you do. Um, but it's nice, very sharp serrated edge. I really like it. So two useful features and this, this thing you do not get on a surge. That's one of the things that sets it apart. Um, here we have a saw, hacksaw, I thought it was a hacksaw, no, jigsaw, no, I, I forget, I, I always forget, I'm sorry. It's a saw for wood, and you can saw wood with it, and it's a nice aggressive saw, I, I really like it. Uh, it works very, very well, a uh, good aggressive profile, and it, you know, not for logs, obviously, but if you do DIY stuff, I've definitely used it in that, it's comfortable to hold, and it will tear through wood like there's no tomorrow. Unlike with the Surge, this is not replaceable. I mean, it's replaceable, you can buy another one. There's a just screw in there, but you can't take it out. With the Surge, you can take it out and put a file in, um, just because it has a locking mechanism. Um, the nice thing about that is that it's a very versatile system because you can put other types of tools in. With this, you only have the saw, but because it doesn't have a separate lock, it is in there very securely. And of course, there's a little bit of a, a wiggling, that's just, really it's just because it's, it's thinner metal, but down at the bottom there it's it's in nice and tight, not a lot of tolerance, or a, a good tolerance, that's what I wanted to say. On the other side you have uh, the uh, file, nice serious file there, a diamond file on the other side, and a uh, finer edge file there, there at the bottom. I'll show you all three uh, in a sec. Okay. <coughs> Still have a bit of a cold, sorry. The pliers, simple, as I said, needle nose pliers. You have the, the round pliers there, you have the little grippy bit there that I actually uh, used today in the demonstration. Wire cutters, unlike with the surge, these are not replaceable, so once these bend or break, your tool is done for. Um, that's a pity. I would love to see replaceable cutters on this too at some point, but they are a lot smaller than on the surge, so I don't know if it's you know technically really possible. There's also no crimper at the bottom there, um, but it is a nicely balanced tool. Okay, um, on this side here you have two tools on the inside, of course you have a ruler which uh, goes from about, uh, I don't know, s guessing seven and a half inches to uh, a little over 19 centimeters, that's uh, in there. 
Uh, on this side you have the bit, the bit holder, the Leatherman bit holder. Simple, works well. It means you always have a Phillips and a flathead at hand and they... I use this a lot and 9 out of 10 times they fit. So either, be it flathead or be it, be it a Phillips. So that's really, really cool. Really like that. Um, here you have a tin opener, aka can opener. Uh, works well. Uh, it has a nice edge on it and also has this uh, wire stripper right there, which is also a pretty aggressive uh, looking thing. And then finally on the other side you have a large flathead. Bit of a waste because you already have a, a bit uh, holder. I mean yes this is integrated in the tool but um, this could have been an awl. Uh, um, could have been a, uh, a chisel and although it does kind of have a chisel shape because this slopes down it doesn't have a really sharp side so I mean this is a chisel would be really cool would be useful and this with a bit I don't I really understand uh, there is the um, how we call that micro not it's not I don't think it's officially in a, a, a micro bit I think it's more like a nano bit that's really small um, you have a flat head and a, um, a Phillips uh, uh, bit on there driver on there and this is, you know, as a person who wears glasses, uh, something I use uh, about once every two weeks to tune up all the screws and make sure that the legs stay nice and tight. So, if you wear glasses, super useful. If you don't, I don't really know, unless you're a watchmaker, but I don't think you would use a multi-tool like that a lot as a watchmaker. So, you know. Oh, by the way, all these things lock, huh? That's nice. So, every tool in this locks. Which is very very nice. Finally you have this fancy little thing that I have to say when I saw the first time uh, did give me some pause and made me think what what's this but it's just a pair of scissors. Uh, not nearly as giant or heavy duty or um, <laughs> insane looking as on the Surge. Um, I'm pretty sure the charge is fairly envious of the Surge uh, scissors but to be honest it worked fine. No issues with this. A fairly long mouth and it, yeah, it works. Spring loaded too, which is nice. A cutting quick sheet of paper or even something like a shoelace or whatever that's broken off works very well. Very nice pair of scissors. It doesn't, I hate it when you have these cheap scissors and they kind of, you know, the material you're trying to cut kind of gets tangled into it. It's a disaster and these just doesn't happen. Sheath is nice, has this uh, elastic band it's very hard to show, but loopy, loopy, loopy thing there, which you can put your uh, bit kit in. Uh, small suggestion for someone who's been using these for a while: don't don't put it in with the bits pointing to the front because then you try to put it in and it kind of gets snagged. Put it in the other way around and it just fits in very easily. All right, just a free tip that you probably have already figured out yourself, but if you haven't, there you go. Works well. Even fits in there with the, the belt or the uh, pocket clip. Works perfect. Uh, and what I really love about this sheath is not only can you wear it vertically like this, you can also wear it horizontally because it has two slits there. That means that when you turn over to the side you won't poke yourself because the tool is sticking out. Okay, more than enough talk. You need to see this tool in action to see if this is something you really want. That's what we're going to do next. I've set up uh, sort of an obstacle course, uh, the multi-tool obstacle course in our term I invented. I forgot the name of the person who did it, but someone else uh, invented that multi-tool obstacle course, but it's a great name. Let's see what we can do. That's coming up next. Hope this was useful, and I'm glad to see you later. Bye-bye. Okay. Leatherman Charge, TTI. A uh, little Phoenix light added to that, but it doesn't come with the tool. Tool. Nice. Not too big. Um, that's why I like carrying this every day comes with a couple of bits too. It's always useful to have some extra options. But here we have the tool. Now, start out wire cutting. We have some lighter uh, steel wire. I don't even think that's a millimeter. Let's. Uh, it doesn't have those crimpers at the bottom that the uh, surge has, for example. So I'm going to have to use the hot. Oops, sorry. The hard wire cutters. No problem. No issue. Works fine, don't even have to exert too much pressure. 
uh, checking out wire cutters, no issue. Of course, this is not an ultra hard wire, but even so. Needle nose is fairly rounded off, so you can make, uh, I like to call that fish eyes with this, fairly easily. You know, no problem. Uh, works perfectly fine. Okay. What else could you do with this? Oh, wait a minute. I have my hard wire right here. Um, this is a uh, clothes hanger. Now, that's hard, thick wire. It's definitely over a millimeter. There we go. It's tough. It's definitely harder. I look at the hard wire cutters and there's no, no, there's a little bit of a scuff maybe, but there's no folding or bending of the warping of the metal. No problem there. No problem here. You can definitely bend wire with that. Sorry that was off camera, but you can. Okay, what else have we got? Uh, what if you want to put in a bolt? We have the bolts and we put in a nut. Can you tighten this? That's yeah, no problem. It's a good grip. One thing I like about these, these pliers in particular is that they kind of stay open in the position you put them. So when you lock that around a bolt, it doesn't really lock, but it kind of stays on, which is nice because it means it won't open and you won't have to keep exerting that much pressure. Okay, nut and bolt. That's out of the way. I um, always like to know what happens if you have a, a nail and you don't have a hammer. Is that recommended use? Not really, but it'll get a nail in the wall. No damage. All right. Remove nail. No problem. So that's pretty neat. Um, some other things on here that you may want to use. File, of course. You can see the wood flying off. Nice aggressive file. The other side, diamond file, I use that more for metal work, but in theory, you can also use it for wood, of course. And a little third side of the file, more of a metal file, but you see that definitely leaves an impression in the wood. Okay, well, I have to clean that up later. Uh, saw, 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 there we go, couldn't find my saw. You see, it just destroys the wood. So, a very simple, uh, nice hacksaw there. Is it a hacksaw? I always forget. Is it a jigsaw? No. Is it a sawy saw? It's a very sawy saw. Alright, and it works. Okay, a uh, bit, 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 bit of cutting. Yeah. Um, there is two things I'd like to show you here. This, of course, is seat belt material, courtesy of my friend Bill. The S30V knife blade goes through that with apparent ease. Now, it's not really taut, right? So, it's, it's, I have to fiddle a bit. I'm sure if this would be tight, the knife would perform even better. We have serrated edge knife. Let's go in the other way. See, it's not this hardly even any resistance. Now, one thing that I did want to show you, and that I forgot to grab, so one sec. A tie wrap, zip tie, whatever you like to call it. I saw this trick from someone on YouTube, and I, I really liked it. Unfortunately, I forgot his name, though. I, I'm, I'm really sorry. Call it what you like, gut hook or a seat belt cutter. Um, of course, you could, if you are in this situation, you need to undo this. You can do all kinds of things, right? You could 
uh, you could uh, uh, kind of hack away at it or cut it, but if you have a gut hook like this, it's also tempting to kind of get it under there and see what this does. I'm trying not to cut myself and also see how much pressure I need to exert, but boom, there you go. Very simple, that didn't require that much tension really, and your zip tie is, uh, well, it's racked of course, but it works. Okay, final thing. A bit of cordage. It's not a uh, paracord, it's just simple nylon cord. No resistance. Cuts like a charm. And the uh, serrated edge, I have no... Boom, there you go. Same thing. So, very easy. Very nice knife. I really like the S30V steel on this. Just makes for a very pleasant knife. Um, let's see if I can hold the two of these together. Yeah, there you go. No problem. So, a very, very pleasant tool. A bit smaller than my absolute number one favorite, the Surge. But very, very nice. Now, would I recommend this tool? Absolutely. It's a Leatherman. It's high quality. As I said, a bit smaller than the Surge, but that also makes it easier to carry. Uh, it's a nice weight with the titanium stuff and such. I mean, it's, it's fairly light very robust and it has what you need right it, it has what you need and one thing I actually could show you hadn't shown you yet a pair of scissors cuts without issue so you have all of that um, I think it's a great tool. I think it's a great tool for simple everyday chores that you, you may want to perform. You don't want to carry an entire toolbox, but you can do the basics just with your multi-tool. And I think in that regard it's great. So I would definitely recommend this. Uh, I think it's a, um, uh, a great tool to keep in a bag or something, especially because it is a little smaller and doesn't take up too much space and it works. So there you have it. Very happy to have it. I hope this was useful and I'd gladly see you later.